Just one, yeah, one collector, yeah, one collector. So. Good evening. Today we celebrate the second Sunday in ordinary time. Today we will sing the Gloria. The Gloria is found at number 346 in your hymnal, which you can mark ahead of time. At this time, we will sing our entrance hymn, which is Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, at number 549. Songs of thankfulness and praise, Jesus, Lord, to you we raise. Manifested by the star to the sages from afar, branch of royal David's stem. In your birth at Bethlehem, anthems be to you addressed, God in flesh made manifest, manifest at Jordan stream. Priest and King Supreme, and at Cana wedding guest, in your Godhead manifest, manifest in part divine, changing water into wine. Anthems be to you addressed, God in flesh made manifest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So that opening hymn that we sang, on the top of the page it said, Epiphany. Well, today isn't the Feast of Epiphany, but in the tradition, the, whole, the Feast of Epiphany is wider. It refers to, the word means, God in the flesh now being revealed, manifested. That's what Epiphany means. We see God in the flesh, in the humanity of Jesus Christ and acknowledge him as our God. He was manifested at Christmas, the day of his birth. He was manifested when the, the three wise men, the Magi, came to adore him. And he was manifested at his first public miracle, which took place at a wedding feast in Cana. And we'll hear that in today's gospel. That's why we sang that epiphany hymn today. And of course, at every mass, through the word and through the sacrament, God made flesh is revealed to us that we may be saved, share in his life. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Lord. 
glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, you. We, we bless you, you. we adore you, you. We, we glorify you. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. This evening's readings begin on page 65 in the Missalet, page 65. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, sing 
to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Give to the Lord, you families of nations, give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom, to another the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another mighty deeds, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another variety of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. You please be seated. I remember the first wedding that I attended. I was seven years old. It was the wedding of the daughter of some very close friends of my parents. It took place over at Christ the King Parish in Silver Spring. And I still have a pretty vivid memory of the event. I attended the, the wedding mass, but I actually have no memory of that. It was the reception that I that I remember, where everyone, just, you know, like Jesus and his disciples and the mother of God, gathered at the, the wedding feast, the banquet. So I remember the food. It was really good food. I remember the punch. There were two punch bowls. One was the punch bowl for children. Okay, you're following me. And the other was not for children. Uh, so I remember the punch was very good too. So, I mean, really good food, really good drink. Um, and people were dressed so well. Um, amazing. And of course, the bride in her, um, in her beautiful wedding dress and the groom, you know, in his tux. And, and then the reception just sort of, it, it, it was, there was a lot of excitement. And there was music and there was dancing. And so that was my first wedding. And of course, being a priest, I've been to lots of weddings. Uh, and a good number of wedding receptions. But actually, I didn't know it at the time, that was not the first wedding, that wedding feast that I'd ever attended. Because I didn't realize that every Mass, every Eucharist, is a wedding banquet. And we actually right before we receive Holy Communion, when the, the food of the banquet is shared, 
the priest says, blessed are those who are called, now we say it says, to the supper of the Lamb. It's a quotation from the book of Revelation, which describes the heavenly liturgy as a, a wedding banquet. But the word that we are saying, the supper of the Lamb, is really the wed it's it means wedding feast. Blessed are those who are called to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Where Jesus is the bridegroom and his church, all of us, are united to him in the most holy bonds of spiritual marriage. Now this, this wedding banquet is foretold by the prophet Isaiah as he speaks of the restoration of Jerusalem after its destruction by the Babylonians and after the return of the exiles from Babylon by the Persian king so that the Jews could rebuild it. And the word of God is spoken to the people in the midst of this ruined city, Jerusalem, also called Zion. And the prophet says, for Zion's sake, I will not be silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a, bur a burning torch. The prophet will continue to speak God's word until the people in response to that word rebuild the city and rebuild the temple of God, thus restoring the worship of God as God intended it to be. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. The Hebrew word for espoused is beulah or beulah. Ever heard of a Baptist church, beulah Baptist church? Yeah, sure, espoused, married. The church is the bride of Christ. And as a young man marries a virgin, and all the excitement that surrounds that, not only for the couple, but for their families and their friends, which is reflected in the marriage banquet, your builder, your God, will marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. When the word became flesh, humanity and divinity were married. God married human nature. And through faith in the one who has married us, his divinity now comes into our hearts, into our minds, to our lives, and what does it do? It transforms us as water was transformed into wine, as the first great public sign of Jesus' ministry by which his disciples began to believe in him, believe in him for who he was, not just a great prophet, a great teacher, and a great friend, but as God in the flesh. And of course, in the wedding feast that is every Mass, the bread and the wine are transformed by the Holy Spirit into the food that we share in the feast, the Holy Eucharist, whereby the divine and the human come together in the marital embrace. Now when I was seven years old I didn't understand that about the Mass. When I was 17 years old I don't think I understood that about the Mass. 
even when I was ordained a priest, although I had been taught that this is what the church believes, and it's plain enough in the scriptures, if you have the eyes to see it, I'm not sure that I grasped it. And even today, I'm not sure that I have grasped the mystery of the joining of God and human beings through the sacrament of the Eucharist, the sacrament of our faith. But I'm getting there. And just as a, a marriage needs to be continually uh, celebrated beyond just the wedding day and the wedding feast, through anniversary celebrations, for instance, especially the important anniversary dates, 25 years, 40 years, 50 years. So we come to the Mass uh, every week, the frequency determined by Jesus, because he says, keep holy the Lord's Day, keep holy the Sabbath. So he's the one that determines how often we ought to come to Mass, the appropriate time to celebrate this, this wedding feast and to share in the food that is incomparable. It is a food that is not simply earthly, but from heaven, the food that will strengthen us in order to continue our journey to heaven as even now we we share a foretaste of that heavenly life in the bonds of charity that our faith makes possible, uniting us to Jesus and to one another. When I was growing up, when you were growing up, most of you who were my age or close to it, uh, it was always the custom that you would dress up for Mass. I mean, you, you wouldn't necessarily wear a tuxedo if you were a man or, a, or a, a very elaborate and expensive dress uh, as a woman. But you'd wear good clothes. You wouldn't just come in beach clothes. Why? To support the reality of the Mass as the wedding feast of the Lamb. Just as we wouldn't go to a wedding in beach clothes if we did, well... These days, some weddings are held on beaches. Uh, but, you know, normally you wouldn't do that, right? You dress up. It's important. And that isn't necessarily any, any jab at anyone in our parish about what we wear as we come to Mass. But, you know, whatever helps to support the reality and the understanding of what is happening here, after Jesus made the water into wine, what did the head waiter do? He went to the groom. It was the groom's responsibility to provide wine for the celebration. I guess in these days it's more the, the, the bride's family. Or is it the groom's family? I forget. You know. But in those days... The groom was responsible. And the wedding feast wasn't just an afternoon or an evening. It, it, in those days, it lasted a number of days. That was a lot of wine, if you had a lot of people. The bridegroom didn't provide enough. So what did Jesus do? He took the role of the bridegroom, and he provided the wine. When we were caught in our sins and we're not able to fulfill our obligations of charity to God and to one another, what happened? God became flesh to provide what we couldn't provide and then to give us the wherewithal in the future to give to provide what needs to be there. So just to kind of end that beginning story, um, the wedding took place in 1967, so I wasn't seven years old. I was nine years old. And praise God, they're still married. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together profess our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now turn to our Heavenly Father. We ask his mercy as we place all of our trust in him. Our response is, grant our prayer, O Lord, that God may bring all Christian believers into the unity of his one holy Catholic and apostolic church through the charitable sharing of their faith with one another. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Lord. That all nations may come to acknowledge God as the author of life, that they may seek to protect human life at all stages, from conception to natural death. And for God's blessing on the March for Life this Friday and the recognition of the rights of the unborn in this country, we pray to the Lord. Grant our Grant prayer, our prayer O Lord. Lord. As our nation celebrates Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day this Monday, may God banish racism and unjust discrimination from every human heart. We pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer O Lord. Lord. For the grace to live with greater obedience to our Savior and what he asks us to do. We pray to the Lord. Grant our Grant prayer, our prayer Lord. Lord. For the prayer intentions of those we serve through our food pantry, for the poor, and for all those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer Lord. Lord. For those preparing to receive the sacraments, for faithful marriages, and for an abundance of religious vocations. We pray to the Lord. Grant our Grant prayer, O Lord. Lord. For the elderly, the terminally ill, those suffering from mental illness and addiction, and all who are sick, that the Lord may fill them with the strength of the Holy Spirit and keep them firm in faith and serene in hope. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord for all our beloved dead, that the Lord may welcome them into paradise where there will be no more sorrow, weeping, or pain. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for those special prayers which we bring before the Lord this day. We pray to the Lord, grant, grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Lord. Loving Father, we ask you to sanctify us in your Son, Jesus. You have called us to a holy way of life. May we respond to you with obedient faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Gentlemen, thank you for your service tonight. May the Lord bless you always for your faithfulness. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we owe for you. Through the earth and work of human hands, we would come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever by the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbles himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever with some spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, Lord, in your sacrifice and the sight of Savior. Please sing, Lord God, Lord, wash me away from my iniquities, cleanse me of my sins. Thank you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. And this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of John Downs. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalt and praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When, when we eat this, this bread and drink this, this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with St. Hugh of Grenoble and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I've come to know and to believe in the love that God has for us. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So welcome to our visitors with us this evening. A few announcements. Our 2021 tax statements are, will be available. The parish office will be sending out letters for the 2021 contributions to all parishioners who requested and received a letter last year. So if you got one last year, it will be sent automatically. If you did not request a letter last year but would like one for this year, we'd ask you to please call the office or put a request in writing in the parish office side door mailbox, making sure to include your envelope number and contact information. We're most grateful. Letters will be sent out around February the 1st. The St. Hugh Ladies of Charity will be collecting blankets and throws during the month of January to be delivered to some so others might eat and distributed to the homeless. You can place your donations in the labeled boxes at the entrance of the church. Please feel free to take one or more of the St. Joseph prayer cards that you'll find in the back of church. Uh, I highly encourage you to consider making prayer to St. Joseph part of your regular prayer life. Also, we have uh, flower vases in the back uh, for you to take, again, as many as you want. These are vases we collect through funerals and so forth over the years, and uh, so uh, they'll be available the next few weeks, and then what remains will recycle. Monday is the federal holiday honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The daily mass will be celebrated at 9 a.m. and the parish office will be closed. And now I invite you to please pick up the prayer card from the pew rack as we offer together the prayer to St. Hugh of Grenoble in observance of the 75th anniversary of the founding of our parish dedicated to his patronage. So let's pray together. O oh God, who wonderfully numbered among your holy shepherds the Bishop St. Hugh of Grenoble, a man burning with divine charity and outstanding for that faith which overcomes the world, grant through his intercession that we too, persevering in faith and charity, may merit to be sharers of his glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Immaculate Mary, our praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. Our final hymn is number 941. O God beyond all praising, number 941.
Oh!